goal when we open the vacuum desiccator is to keep from disturbing the solid inside. Okay. The first valve we turn is the one on the side of the desiccator itself. Okay. We're going to turn it from parallel to the vacuum line to perpendicular to the vacuum line. Next, we turn off the vacuum on the hood valve itself. Depends on the user before you how many turns that requires. <laughs> how strong they are. Right. All right, next, for, you really want to be careful not to pull the hose at the valve on the desiccator because this attachment of the valve to the desiccator is just a slide. So if you pull, it will come right out. Okay. So instead, to break the vacuum here, we will pull the hose off of the vacuum um, outlet bar. Sometimes a little twist works for some people. Perfect. All right, and then lastly, we will gradually open the stopcock. You can hear a hissing sound um, to allow air into the desiccator. If we open it quickly, the turbulence of the air going in will stir up solid and could cause, you know, some uh, transfer of solid into the other places of the desiccator. And then as the hissing kind of slows down, you can open a little bit more. Okay. Um, when you take the lid off, it's better to turn the lid upside down so that whatever contaminant is on the tray just to get on the lip of the lid. And now you can access your reagents. One is, I don't know if you can see that this kind of sucked in a little bit. When we put our reagents um, away in the original reagent bottles, we try to make sure that the lid <laughs> is not um, screwed on all the way because it can collapse so much that we have, um, you know, quite a struggle to get the cap off. Right. The other is for our distribution bottles, we put them in here with the Kim wipe on top so that um, the air that starts out inside can, you know, successfully be evacuated and get fully dry versus somewhat, you know, perhaps dry in the um, original reagent bottles. And we take the caps off. We put the caps in too because, as you can see, the solid sodium borohydride gets on there. Mm -hmm. If they're left out, it just ends up being a puddle because okay. it's so hydroscopic. When we put them out for the students, um, we put the cap on, of course. What you're going to do at the end of the day is bring these back. Take it off, put the chem wipe on, put it in. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right, so I'm going to reuse this chem wipe. You guys might want to use new ones. You can assess because if there's any sodium borohydrate on the tissue and you um, leave it out, leave it out, right, it will be wet. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, Reestablishing the vacuum is very simple by comparison. Reattach. Reattach, exactly. And nothing else. Just <laughs> you don't have to turn that? Right, because right, it's already parallel. Exactly. Okay, cool. Exactly. Um, and I, you know, there isn't a definite how much you need to turn this. As long as you're getting vacuum, and the way that you verify you're getting vacuum is you lift the lid, and if the base comes with, you have the lid correctly aligned and sufficient vacuum in there. Perfect. Yeah, and that's the lid. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>